and you're listening to PPMLP Philadelphia 106.5 FM, and you're listening to the Found in Translation radio show and podcast, the talk show that sacks truth about politics and today's hottest issues. This is Jose Rico Yasso and my co-host, my fearless coach, Yashira Yaya Rivera. Yes, I'm so excited to be here. I'm so thrilled to be at the Philadelphia Latino Film Festival. I mean, I am thrilled to be here. The colors are vibrant. The people are popping. People are lining up. There's so many people coming in all at once. I mean, I have never been in a room for so many beautiful people. This is really nice. The Founded Translations uh, family is proud to be coming from the opening night of the Philadelphia Latino Film Festival. This film festival is taking place at the University of the Arts in Center City, Philadelphia. It's going to take place throughout this weekend on South Broad Street. This is the festival's seventh year, seventh and it's year. become a true kickoff to the summer of the Latino arts community here in the city of Brotherly Love. Thank you for those watching um, on either IG Live or Facebook Live. Yeah, Shira's uh, fanaticada is waving to her here. And, uh, of course, <laughs> our WPPMLP 106.5 family, who are media sponsors of the festival. Uh, Yashira, let people know the, the mission of the festival and why it was so important for us to support this event today. So I just want to say, for I'm going to probably say this like 10 times throughout the show today, I am so thrilled to be here. Um, so that's number one. The reason to why you should be thrilled is because Ray and I are thrilled. <laughs> but most importantly, the Philadelphia Latino Film Festival's mission Maggie, can we get a second here on the radio? Is, is to showcase and nurture established and emerging creative Latin American and Latin and Latino filmmakers to promote and celebrate the richness and diversity of Latin American Latino well, I mean, cultures you, you, and experiences and just killing it in the Latin community. sure you couldn't. You couldn't. And who better to discuss as we begin the show the the director of the Philadelphia Latino Film yes. Festival. And, you know, one of our admonas here, just a wonderful person, a great friend, a family member. Uh, Puerto Ricans, we're family. It's not just friendship. Absolutely. Um, and uh, Marangeli, Mejia, Ravel. <laughs> Marangeli, this is your baby. Quite a quite a day here, huh? Bueno, hijo, en realidad es un bebé colectivo. Somos familia, somos familia extendida. Estoy súper contenta de tener la oportunidad. Es un honor el tenerlos ustedes aquí. Felicitaciones en su programa. Y el que estén aquí con nosotros esta tarde. Um, I say it's a collective baby because it's a team effort. We have a phenomenal team from our art director that makes us look absolutely beautiful to the wonderful Beza Santos, who's our communications director, to Cristal Sotomayor, who's an emerging filmmaker that's put up with me this season as a programming <laughs> coordinator. <laughs> and we have like geeked out and talked about movies and had a great time for months. Manangeli, for people listening around the country, yes. even if they're from this area, but around the country, tell people why it was so important for this film festival to be part of the cultural landscape of Philadelphia? Oh, absolutely. Well, because Philadelphia is a city of immigrants, because we have a diversity that needs to be celebrated, because we're a lot of times sold short because of our geographic location, the sandwich between, or the ham of the sandwich between New York and D.C., That's right. and we have a lot to offer, Absolutely. Um, and we have so much talent, so what you'll see tonight, specifically tonight, that it's opening night and throughout the weekend, you will see a combination of visiting filmmakers, but also local talent. That's that what is, I like about that's what you what do I here. Love. Yeah, the, it's the mix, right? You share it. No, so yeah, Latino, so Latin you know, local. firstly, I want to say that this is a beautiful event. Jose? Uh, this is my Jose? first time. This is my first time attending your bag this. Is over here. This is my first yeah, time attending this, stuff, and <laughs> I was doing so much research about it because you know it's my third year in Philly, and the previous years I really haven't been able to be submerged like. This is such a staple for the Latinx community because we're so underrepresented in so many ways, especially in film. You know, when you see huge award ceremonies like Venice, you know, Cannes, when you see Oscars, you don't see that. So, like, you know, since this is such a staple, like, what do you envision, you know, next year and five years to come? Like, what do you want this to be well, or become? Well, a couple of things that I want to say. I want to say that we have been blessed and that a lot of times... There's a lot of representation that goes unnoticed mm -hmm. or that it gets lost in the midst of being bombarded with information. South by Southwest this year, Palante, uh, which is a film by a Puerto Rican filmmaker about the devastation of Maria, one best short. Uh, and he talked about the over 4,000 people that die as a result of the storm. Yeah. Um, in this line of this year, we have Jose, which is the first uh -huh. Central American film to ever premiere at the Venice Film. First Central American film from Guatemala to ever premiere at the festival. And not only that, but also won the Queer Lion Award in 2018. Um, you have a combination for us, staying at the Pulse, 
being very honest about the programming that we are going to do based on who we see and what the what the climate is locally. We're opening with Room 140 that takes you on a journey of a motel that it's or a hotel that rents a room to folks that are being released from detention centers, uh, done by a fabulous Mexican director, uh, Priscila Gonzalez Sainz. You have that. Then we go tomorrow. We go to Cuba with Baco Sol, and yes. we take. You know, we take you on a journey where an artist is going and connecting his ancestors to contemporary and emerging sound. So, yeah. so like, so where do you see it? Like, since you're doing, you're doing amazing, incredible things this year. Like, so what do you have planned for like next year? Like, what's your next big thing? Like, who do you want to be here? Like, what film or director? Personally, do you want to Benicio del Toro, but that's a separate conversation. Hey, listen, who do we need to call? Because <laughs> I'll be a part of that no, team. Absolutely, <laughs> that's a separate conversation. Oh, um, that's amazing. But well, my mom no, wants no, to know: Did Ricky Martin make a movie so he can no. come by? Well, hey, <laughs> what I would say is that what's really important and what we want to continue pushing is creating opportunities for people to share their their talent and showcase their productions we want to be able to incubate and we want to be able to get as much um, capacity building opportunities and resources for filmmakers and other creatives That's tomorrow amazing. we're starting with a youth salon and then at noon we're going into an acting workshop. So that's also something that could be appealing to theater actors. No, and you I love the fact that you're engaging young people in, in multi-generations into this because festival. That's really special. There's a lot of, of things that we should deconstruct. You know, you're talking to a 51-year-old woman. Being 50 now and being 50 when our parents were growing up or, you know, got to 50, it was a different reality. Yes, right. And the cross... The intergenerational dynamics have shifted as a result. You have people that are working or as they get older. You have people that are starting new careers at a different time. The boom of entrepreneurs, which was always present, but just the fact that they have gone and received so much uh, support. Well, let me tell you something, Angela. You know, you really need to be credited because, it, first of all, it's not easy to... You really took this idea and took it to a whole other level. This was such a this is such an important part of the cultural landscape of our community. Thank you. And to have an event that has a political consciousness, but that that still has that 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 zest and that life and that positivity. This is a, a very conscious group of people, but a, the people that are having a good time, very stylish, multi generational. Uh, you're really incorporating all the culture, uh, all the cultural elements. We have a great artwork here. We have Zenia that's going to uh, that's going to sing later for us. So. So, you know, hats off to you. You know, Lisa, you, you, you guys have always been part of the family. So there's nowhere else we'd rather be today. Thank you. Absolutely. And I want to give a shout out to Carlos Rosa. Our artwork, which is absolutely breathtaking, is a collaboration. So that Incredible. has been the push. I mentioned Cristal putting up with me for the last few months. Lisa has always been ahead of the curve. You know, that's she the had that, That's who she is. So she always yes. engaged a group of volunteers. <laughs> so as Nas will say, we took a, a page from Lisa's Rhyme book. And what we did is that then we incorporated a process of collaboration. Not only do we want to promote it and make people aware that this is the way to go, where it's all about collective impact. You also know me from my other life in nonprofit, so collective impact is where it's at, and you have to talk the talk and walk the walk. So Didier wanted to work with Kahlo, who's a phenomenal artist. He embraced the journey with us. I work with uh, Cristal on programming. Lisa works with a diverse group of people in terms of communication. So the idea is, how do we keep on? It's familia. It's about familia. That's at the core of our cultural values. So that's and I, and I do want to say it's, it's an absolute pleasure to finally meet you. Thank you. Same here. So we're connected on social media. I know you've I'm got connected a, with so many of you all, but it's I'm going to say something before I go. But yes, Rafael please. better no. bring his mother to see the Lucecita Benitez cartas I de amor para una icona el domingo. Uh, That's a, that sounds that. like a date. That <laughs> sounds like a date. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Manangeli, thank you for inviting us here. Um, oh, mijo, you know, we're here for you 100%. Anytime. And I know with all these people, everyone is like waiting for her to, to, to grab her to get this party started. So we're going to let her go. Thank you for your generous hey, time, Maggie. Absolutely. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. And, and thank uh, you, Philly Camp. Woo. Manangeli Mejia Raven, the, the director of the Philadelphia Latino Film Festival. See, that's a leader when, when she spends all her time giving every, the rest of the team props that they deserve. So can, can that's the kind of people that we that? like to can, support. Like, so when she, while she was talking, I literally got goosebumps. I was like, that was so incredible. And I'm not going to get too emotional today, but our culture and 
our people and moments like this make me so incredibly proud. Not that I'm not proud every day and that I don't wear my Puerto Rican pin almost every day, but just like that excitement and just, you know, doing something because this is a heavy lift, you know, uh, you know, from my nine to five and on my day job. For those of you who know me, I do events. That is my bread and butter, and it is not easy. I repeat, it is not easy to do one no. event for two hours on a random Thursday. No, and what people who are, who are listening to this and watching this around the country and around the world don't realize is that we just had a huge thunderstorm right when everyone got out of work at 5 o'clock. It was a un, un aguacero. That's right. So it was difficult for people to get here, but people still got here on time. People are in a good mood. They're a little wet, but that's okay. <laughs> We're drying off, and everyone's in good spirits. And for people that want to are, are not able to make it down to center city philadelphia tonight but they want to be part of the rest of the event they're going to have programming especially for young people during the day and they're going to have movies and, and workshops throughout the weekend go to phlaff.org that's phlaff.org to check out the schedule buy tickets a lot of the ticket uh, workshops and films are free yep so there's no excuse for you not to get down to the philadelphia latino film festival which is taking place at the university of the arts uh this weekend in philadelphia Yashira, what, what 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 movie are you looking most forward to? So uh, let me tell you something. Weekend? So you know that we, you know, you told me about the Latino Film Festival. With my schedule, I've been a little crazy to really like figure out how am I going to attend. You know where to go, what to do. So last night, you know, I had to convince my hubby that we're going to watch every single trailer that is being <laughs> featured here. Yes. And there's part of your it's part of your research. <laughs> it's for part the, of my research. Show. So I, there's 38 total. Most of them, like a lot of them are short. A lot of them are main films. I got through mostly all of them. My list is a little bit ridiculous, but I watched two of the trailers twice. So that's like a given. The two trailers I watched twice was Yo Imposible, which is a that's film good, yeah. um, that is about, you know, sexual identity and, you know, uh, many things and I was so compelled through that trailer like I was like well wait a second what did I just watch and then like I rewatched it so that's for sure Las Madres de Burks because it's so close to home Absolutely. you know it's about local mothers and their stories about you know these detention centers and the madness that's happening in this country um, the other one that I have highlighted here is Councilwoman Women Make Moves I almost like that trailer made me like the one part of the trailer, she's like, ¿Cómo te vas a decir, mi amigo, que una mujer que limpia casa o que limpia no puede estar en City Hall? And I was like, girl. Like, she made me like, yeah. She's one of the great political stories yes. nobody talks about. A woman well, that still is a domestic, wor- uh, domestic worker, cleans hotels, and she's on the city council. It's not a little tiny town. I mean, she's a, she's a city council person in Rhode Island. It's an incredible story. I'm so glad they made it a documentary. I, I know yeah, of her. Yeah, but her so grit. And, she's unbelievable. And, she's I just, and I just watched um, AOC's documentary yes. um, on Netflix, um, Breaking Down the... I can't, just forgot it. Breaking Down the House? Or, yeah, Breaking Down the House. Yeah, bring, oh, Breaking Down the House. Yeah, and I was like, oh, my God, like that's so wonderful. And then I see this trailer, and I'm like, so why haven't I watched this yet? Um, and, of course, the one I want to watch is what... Um, Maria Angeli was just talking about uh, Cartas de Amor para una Iconica like Icona excuse me uh, um, Lucecita Benitez yes. let me tell you something I had to look her up Lucecita but well, you're a real Puerto Rican you know no I'm like Benita. a real Puerto Rican incredible I called, no. diva music no, pop icon and an activist and LGBT a temper tantrum. activist independent no, diva back in the day I called my sister and threw incredible. a temper tantrum I said Lily do you know who this woman is and she goes but Alchita you're the musician of the family you know she might have Lucecita on the female side I mean you know Mark it's hard to top pure vocal skills I mean La India Judy Torres level I mean an incredible voice that woman had and let me and tell you, and lived a long time. She, she, she well, she's still alive. alive. I was ready to say, I thought she was still alive. Yeah, like she's no, like. No, so I was, she was so shocked. She was courageous. I yeah, mean, so I got to look up her story. I'm actually really excited. On the flip side, to bring my son's Sunday to see Poppy and the Scorpion. So it's a <laughs> movie about a dad fighting a scorpion in the desert. So my sons can have a good time. That's amazing, uh, though, that you're bringing that. your sons. That's, oh yeah, that's no, incredible. That's gonna, it's going to be a lot of fun. And let me just tell you, Ray, that was only four of like what the twelve movies I oh, have no, listed they, no, here. No, you know what's really amazing <laughs> about this film festival is the diversity. You have filmmakers locally. You have filmmakers all over the United States, all over Latin America. You have political topics. You have light topics. You have different types of films, short films, black and white documentaries. You have English, you have Spanish. I mean, it really runs the gamut. You know, it's not hard to put all these people together. No, you know? but, no so, but I think the part that was more prolific, though, is 
like it really showed how large and diverse and beautiful the Latinx culture is. Absolutely. Because like if you watch five of the previews back to back, it's like we're all brothers and sisters, bro. We're all part of the Latinx community. And you know, you have people from South America, Central America, the Caribbean, people from, you know, the states that are all a part of this one large, beautiful family. And it's like they're all different colors and physical features and they're just beautiful. And I was just like, I loved every single second of it. I was so pumped. And it's like, that's one of the reasons to why I'm so excited to be here is like just to see how diverse and magnificent it is. No, it is really exciting. And again, this is the Philadelphia Latino Film Festival. First of all, we really want to thank our Philly Cam family, WPPMLP 106.5 FM, for providing us the opportunity to, to be here as part of the media sponsor. Our, our homie Philly Fernando is going to stop on. Siete de aquí en mano. ¿Cómo estás? Fernando Torres, Hola. activist, patron of the arts. This is your Sheriff Rivera, my co-host. Yeah, yeah, mucho gusto. Fernando, so Fernando and I, I usually see him in Washington. He's one of our great yes. Venezuelan activists. So Fernando Torres, we, this is our... We get in the Venezuela video almost to yes. the house. We're going to talk about politics weeks. in a second. I was just talking about you <laughs> yeah. with awesome. our immigration um, uh, lead, Carlos Guevara, who you've spoken to and collaborated with yes. already. But Fernando, uh, we're here on behalf of WPPMLP Philadelphia, but also my podcast, Raise Latino Talk podcast, and, which I know you've been supportive yep. of over the years. So, Fernando, first of all, why was it important for you? You're a busy man. You're always traveling. You're a businessman, <laughs> activist. Why was it important for you to be here to support the Free Latino Film Festival? I think the most important thing is to show our culture. This is a piece of our culture that people forget about it. And that's the thing that I think us as Latinos, we have to show our support for our own people. And the work that the Latino Film Festival has done for years also support those students, those kids that want to get into the industry and I think that's the aspect of it that Marangeli and the whole team does an amazing job and it's so important in our culture that doesn't get enough benefits of it so uh, we have to do it we have to support it and I think it's very powerful Fernando for you be one of our one of our most visible Latino leaders but also immigrant Latino leaders in Philadelphia to be here to support what I love about this event is that it brings together the diversity the multi-generational Latinos the recently arrived immigrants everyone feels comfortable here exactly this is like everybody's home we, this, today is no Puerto Rican Dominican Venezuela and Colombia we're Latinos all. that's right today we're Latinos and, and I then, love that and that was something I just brought up moments ago before you sat down was like you know that was one of the most beautiful things I loved about reading about the Phil Latino Film Festival it's like we're all family and we come in so many different beautiful shapes sizes features you know dialects so my question for you is that you're here is there a, a film or like something that you have in your in your in your kind of like peripherals that you want to go see or like what do you feel well the, if you look at the repertoire this year it's like wow well that's, <laughs> like, that's what i said it, I have, like, quite impressive. i'm like I, I don't have a favorite um i'm skipping the name the ruben blades film yeah um what's the name of it oh it's, my god I'm, I'm like a diehard ruben my name, fan. that's the one i really want to go see that's my that's the one on the top but what the repertoire t- this year is amazing. Yeah, I have a lot of friends, very strong, very a lot strong of friends group. coming in, even the non-Spanish speaking friends. That is like, wow, it's, it's amazing what the, the, the show is. Be able the, the the whole festival is able to show. Fernando, I know you want to enjoy the the reception before we start here, but really quickly, uh, again, you're one of our national uh, Venezuelan activists. Obviously, our hearts and minds with our dear friends and family in, in your wonderful country. Um, we are making some headway, and I know we're collaborating on a national level. We're trying to get some relief for the uh, Venezuelans that are that are that are really refugees that are trying to get into the United States uh, safely. So, can you update people very quickly on on the movement to get uh, temporary protection status for our Venezuelans? Yeah, it was really good. So, we thanks to the five representatives of Philadelphia, the five congressmen as co-sponsor of the bill. We now co-sponsor from Pens- from the state of Florida. The bill passed the big step, which is huge. It passed committee. It got marked up. It passed committee in with a house. 20 to 9. Yes. Therefore, the next vote is a full house. We expect the full house vote will be a mid to late uh, June. I'll be calling you because I like to do That's that. Right. And yeah, I no, was just told next Wednesday we'll be voting on the DREAM Act. The DREAM Act passed the same bill. It will be on the House floor next Wednesday. Well, we need the to talk about yes. no, we, we definitely need to talk. We definitely need to talk because I'm actually orchestrating an event for the Dream Care Act. Um, Great. So, so, because that's super important. And like, this and is we a need lesson, to have this conversation. And we have our Facebook people over here, and IG yep. people over here, and the people listening <laughs> as a podcast radio stage. This is a lesson because we talk about it a lot on the show. You know, Fernando doesn't have a magic wand. He does the hard work with his group. They go visit their legislators, yep. and you know what? They're responsive to that. And and let me tell you something. When you when you bring 
and when you're organized to the table, you bring. He he's work. He's got he's got a set of Republican senators and representatives in Florida supporting him. I know Congressman yep. uh, Soto in Orlando yep. is also supporting us. So so this is a lesson where we can get bipartisan support for issues if we work together. So Fernando, go enjoy the Fernando, event. Fernando, it's Great. such a pleasure meeting you. Yeah. I know Very this won't nice be the last you. time that we won't be chatting because you know once we're off air, I'm gonna find you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah we, we need to talk, talk about talk. in another talk. podcast how to get a bill through. We gotta educate our communities. Absolutely, yeah. And the I Congress will work for us. Carlos give out yeah. my oh, it'll be awesome us. to get him. So we can have we can have that conversation because we actually were talking about it this yeah. week, and I said, well, okay. Fernando's always ready for it. That's right. And como dice Ruben Blades, si nosotros nacimos en en América, somos americanos. Exacto. Todos somos americanos de Canadá hasta la Argentina. That's right. Un placer. And that was Fernando Torres, one of Venezuela. You better, you better sit down, girl, for a minute. Please sit down. Please sit down. So Brought your wonderful so family here. I don't got to introduce Yvette. Yvette's Yvette in the building. This is, this is, this is a one-name song. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Just Yvette is here. Yvette Nunez, of course, it's for the crazy. Greater Philadelphia Chamber of Commerce. Yvette, enjoying the movies? I'm about to. Yes, yes, yes. Congratulations. I know you had graduations. A lot of yeah, good news with your kids this summer. Um, Olivia's so. graduating tomorrow from Central High School. Congratulations. Congratulations. Two, seven, eight. Yeah, and Wes just came back from New Mexico. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, he's always traveling. He's just wonderful. So why do you think this event so... Why Why is this a must-go-to in Philadelphia for you? Well, first of all, I think events like this are intergenerational, and there aren't that many opportunities, I think, for Latinos, non-Latinos to get together, um, children and adults alike to enjoy um, the creative talent that we have in our community. I remember a million years ago, I think when Wes was a baby, there was a Latino film festival at You're going way back, girl. House. You're going way back. And a I think... Collasos might have been Yeah, there was, was a... Uh, uh, Rafael Collasso, uh, Michael Collasso came up on stage. Cassettes were in back then, um, that, just to give you a sense. I think, I think the movie minute. I saw then was Freak by John Leguizamo. Yes. Yeah, that, that was an awesome movie. time. Um, but I love seeing Latinos everywhere, all over Philly, Center City, North Philly, El Barrio. You know, I think we belong in all spaces. We need to occupy all spaces in Philadelphia. And this is a great example of that. So, Yvette, I know uh, real quick on, the, on your day job stuff, I know you've been having conversations around the city about how do we grow the city? How, how's that project going? Give people an update. You, she was on the show a few months ago giving us sort of announcing the kickoff of that, yeah. of that listening tour you were having. Yeah, so I'm really excited because the listening tours continue. We have the partnership of the Hispanic Chamber, African American Chamber, um, Northeast Chamber, Asian American Chamber, dozens of small businesses and community organizations that are coming on. And really the focus is to have people in all corners of Philadelphia push for job creation in all corners of Philadelphia. We know that job growth in Center City is important just because of volume, but we also want to see job growth um, at the neighborhood level, whether it's because businesses are coming in or we're also encouraging entrepreneurship and small business development on the ground. That's amazing. That's really wonderful. Uh, the question I have for you actually has nothing to do with the Latino Film Festival because what you just said was so powerful. I feel that at times that there is unfortunate competition amongst women, especially in a lot of work and job spaces. So what is like a word of wisdom or advice you would give to women to put down the claws and bring out the hugs? And we need, especially in the Latina, you know, and Latinx community, we need to support each other more. So you know what's what? like a word of advice or a sentence you would give to the listeners to be like, all right, ladies, let's do this together. I think some of the things I've learned just over my entire career is that there is enough money to be made out there. There is no need to compete. I think um, if all of us um, pursue the things that we're passionate about, that we're skilled in, we pursue our dreams, th the universe creates the space for that. I don't think there's any need for competition. We need to support each other. I was just telling a sister the other day who texted me um, randomly saying, I really appreciate your friendship. I can't believe how many... Um, women and how much lack of support I've gotten since starting my own business. And I told her basically, you know what, I carajo with people who think that you have to go through their gates in order to arrive and that we all need mentors, multiple mentors for every part of us, right? Spiritual mentors, career mentors, work-life balance mentors. And I think that it's important that you surround yourself with a really positive tribe who can help you get through any of those kinds of challenges. Perfect. I mean, that was a really wonderful response. Thank you. And um, I think that's so important to, you know, make sure that we understand that and reiterate that, ladies, there's plenty of money, chairs, and food for she all of us to eat. 
So put down the cattiness, put it aside. And then my last question is, what film are you excited to see, see this weekend? Well, I'm super excited tonight to see the shorts. Um, anything, to be honest, um, that comes out of Puerto Rico, I'm excited about. I'm excited to see um, the clip about the aftermath of Hurricane Maria. Um, I think certainly the story, I'm, I brought my kids because I think some of the issues, the social justice issues that we're going to see in these movies are important for children to begin to be exposed to as well. Um, so some I'm, consciousness here happening. Yeah, I'm good. most excited about what the kids will have to say after they see some of these. No, that's super great. And, you know, that was one of the questions or, like, conversations I've had recently in my professional career or, like, my other job was, you know, at what age is it best to expose children to these type of topics so that they're not, in a way, traumatized? Because it is, in a way, it is traumatizing. And, and, you know, what kind of method or work do you do to kind of share it? And I think film that is a great is a great method to kind of show it. It's great. I think it's great that they'll see other children in those movies, and this is a reality that kids all over the world are facing. I don't think you have to give it all to them at the same time. I oh, think no, no, age sure, appropriate, no. right? You give them pieces so that it doesn't surprise them when they grow up and they find out that the world is not all pink roses. Well, Yvette, thank you for stopping by. Thank you for your wonderful children and family and their patience because we're always she's, they're always having to share us with the world. So thank you, Yvette. Enjoy the movies, guys, and congratulations on all your your own success. You know, her kids are going to be superstars in their own right. So it's just great to have them here. We got a lot going on here, Cher. I got to catch my breath. There's a lot going on. Activists are walking by. Artists, we have. Uh, we're, we're trying to get Betsy Casanias to come over here. She's very busy. Betsy, if you don't know who she is, Google her. Because Betsy's one of the top muralists we have in the country. So, so I mean, not just Philadelphia, not just the East Coast. This woman is an incredible muralist. She gets commissioned by people all over the world. So there's, um, there's a lot of great people that are here. Of course, Zenny Munsios, uh, the great uh, musical artist, will be joining us later. So um, they're about to start the formal program. So it might be a little quieter, but at the same time, there's just a, I mean, yeah, there's a lot, of, lot going on out here. Yeah, so you know what? I had to catch my breath, you know, running here from my car. And then, like, ever since we've got in here, there's just so many people and so much action. I mean, the energy in here is so beautiful and vibrant. The bright colors, I mean, I'm talking my favorite colors, like, bright coral pink green blue all the beautiful artwork the people the outfits i mean philadelphia never see like seems to amaze me i mean every single time that i go to an event philadelphia always shows me how wonderful of a city we are we truly are the city of brotherly love well we're going to do a, a quick station id on the beginning of segment three yashira and then um and then we're going to get into some of the news headlines as the former program begins you are listening to WPPM LP 106.5 FM in the city of brotherly love. And you are listening to the Found in Translation radio show and Ray's Latino Talk podcast. You know, Found in Translation, right? Thank- thankfully, I was able to find you, right? Yes. What would I do? What would I do without this, Ray? Well, you know, there was a furious, we'll have a more formal launch in the coming weeks, but there was a furious uh, Facebook, Facebook, uh, <laughs> Facebook discussion going on about the name of the show. and. Samantha, our associate producer, and I were texting the wee hours, random topics, because people were so excited. And I got to give so many of our friends, like Madeline Villanueva, so many people that tried to come up with like hybrids of their two favorites. And, and then I definitely did There that was too. one, and I'm not getting into specifics. That it, was, it actually would have been perfect, but it had a very awkward acronym. So we had, to, we had to duff that one, if you remember, Samantha. Remember there was a good one? There was a good, uh, there was a good idea, but it had a bad acronym. Do you remember that? We were going back and forth on it. <laughs> so yeah, so we had the dub. So there was a couple that just missed the cut. But um, if you want to support Raise Latino Talk podcast, soon to be the Found in Translation podcast, and of course WPPMLP Philadelphia. First of all, you can listen to us at one hundred six point five FM in Philadelphia. It's also on the iTunes app. Joe Costa Laura walking by from ARP. A lot of so there's a VIP list here. Yo Costa's walking by and other other community leaders and activists. And, and just friends. so that we're clear, um, Yo Costa and I were both nominated and won for the same award for the Aldea Women of Merida World for Uprising Latina yes. Leaders in Philadelphia. So she is a force to be reckoned no, with. Yo Costa is so a, let me just say that it's always an honor and privilege to be in a room with so much positive and great energy. You know, it, 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 I'm glad you brought that up. Because it really shows just a small, relatively small group of people here. I mean, it's a good crowd, but it's one event, right? One reception. And that, just think about the talent that yeah. just walked past. I mean, you have people, n- n- locally known figures in business, education, activism. Fernando 
is one of the national leaders for this TPS movement for the Venezuelan community. We got uh, business. Javier Suarez walked in. Marangeles, Afro Taino Productions. They do production work with people all over the country. Betsy Casanias is an internationally known muralist. I mean, Phil got a lot of talent. Yes, and let me tell you something. Like It's such a privilege of mine and honor to be here because not only do I know a lot of those names that you mentioned per, like professionally, I'm also getting to know them personally on a very beautiful personal level. And I just met so many dynamite people that you know I'm going to be sure that in the future to definitely collaborate and get to know them. So I am super thrilled to be, be here. So Ray, thank you, as always, to have me on the ones and twos with you. No, on, no question about it. And again, I want to remind people, and I want to remind people, again, support the radio show at 106.5 FM, which you can also hear on the iTunes app and the, the podcast. It's still going to be for a little longer. Uh, Ray's Latino Talk podcast on sort of your podcast feed. Uh, we actually just got invited to be on radio, the radio.com app. So you're going to be able to hear us on there very soon. But anywhere you can download a podcast, Raise Latino Talk podcast, iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, uh, Spotify, Pandora, uh, iHeartRadio just sent me a note that they're, you know, our ratings are kind of going up there. So anywhere you can download a podcast, you can check us out. And on social media, keep, continue the conversations on Twitter. We're, we're on social media. When we're not talking on the microphones, we're on social media Tell me debating about these issues, talking about what's happening in our community at Raise Podcast on Twitter, at Raise Latino Talk on IG. And you can always just look up my Rafael Collazo personal Facebook page and we can see the conversation going. Yashira, remind people where they can find you on social media. I am Yaya Rivera. And recently somebody asked me to why I go by Yaya Rivera, right? And this why is wouldn't what, you go by Yaya if you could get away with it? Well, I mean, because my name is Yashira Marie Teresa Rivera Calero. I and it, that doesn't even fit on a business card. Um, you also can't really use it for social media because you run out of characters. So <laughs> that is why it's easy peasy. I am Yaya Rivera. Um, that's on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and at yashirarivera.com. So Y-A-S-H-I-R-A Rivera.com. But if you follow me on social media, you would know that. So. Sounds good. <laughs> uh, and we're gonna Before we get into the news headlines, I'm going to ask our associate producer, Samantha, I feel bad for our Facebook people now that the crowd's lightened up maybe we can center it so people can can watch us directly here and i'm sure we can we'll still try to grab one or two people for interviews but i think uh mostly, sorry for all the movement yeah there's been a lot going on in my family yeah you're pretty all right you can even bring it in a little closer probably so so um you know, oh we were there all along hello family yes we are here hello hello and of course we're still on ig live so we're going to get into some of the uh news headlines and then i'm sure we're going to grab a few more people before the night is out but the formal program for the Philadelphia Latino Film Festival has begun. The opening reception. Again, if you're in Philadelphia, you're in the region, you got to check out the Philadelphia Latino Film Festival. They have film workshops, receptions, art, art events happening all weekend long, which culminate on Sunday evening uh, with, the out, with, the, um, with the final film. And you can check out phlaff.org for tickets and information on how to be part of this event. And a lot of the events, most of the events are actually for free. So there's no reason... Um, you know, all you need is a, is a couple septa pa- a septa pass and or some good uh, sneakers that you can um, you can get <laughs> down sneakers. here. So, Yashira, we wanted to quickly touch on uh, a few of the headlines for this week. So, right now, we have a ton of headlines, as we know. We have the Mueller report, as we know. We have a lot of crazy things going on in the news. But right now, we have to really, I, I really have to know about your reaction in regards to the special counsel Robert Mueller's mic chop this week. I mean, yes, we, for those of you who watch CNN, it's been breaking news since the moment it's broke. Um, he finally commented on his own investigation into Russian meddling in our election. Let me repeat that again. Investigation into Russian meddling in our election. It's our democracy, uh, people. On the uh, line. Our democracy. Possible conspiracy with the Trump campaign and most like the banana, but the banananess of it all. The Trump administration's potential obstruction of the investigation and, you know, Ray, I, I, you need to tell me more about this. Like, does it mean he's going to... Like, I actually, that was my first question. Is he going to get impeached? Like, well, what are we doing here? Well, there's a couple of things. It, it really brings to light Mueller's basically summarizing his report. There wasn't really a lot of new information. A couple little things. Showed that he don't have too much love for the AG bar and a few other minor tidbits. But basically, he just summarized what he had already released. And that's basically what he was trying to reiterate, like... Before you, we talk about me uh, testifying, before we talk about revealing evidence, I've laid out a pretty strong case, a pretty strong case that he believes legally he could not prosecute um, as it relates to obstruction by President Trump. So it really shows that more of us need to read and more of us need to pay attention. Republican Justin Amash, who's the only Republican in the Congress who's actually 
calling on impeachment proceedings to begin um, at a town hall this week. There was actually Republicans there that said, oh, we didn't realize he did these things. All we heard was no collusion, no obstruction, and we believed them. So, so we, need to, we need to really pay attention. I encourage people to read this report because it really shows that this man has obstructed justice. And we're going to talk about this later. But if any of us did a, a fraction of these things in terms of lying to police, lying to law enforcement, telling people to lie to federal agents, we'd be under the prison, not in the prison. <laughs> Um, I think we may be more than under the prison, you know, especially because of our ethnicity. So let's not forget that. So, Ray, I do have a question for you in regards to the Mueller report, because I was thinking about this, and I'm glad that we're actually having this conversation. Um, With a lot of these politicians saying that they don't know he was doing it and and what's going on and et cetera, um, why do you feel as though not enough politicians are going after impeaching him? Well, the, the, let me tell you what the sort of the political strategy is. The political calculus is that if you go for impeachment, sim- somewhat similarly harking back to the days, y'all are too young to remember when President Clinton got impeached, basically for lying about a sexual encounter. Um, but he lied under oath, so that was not a, a small thing legally. Um, but essentially, um, he won re-election pretty handily after that. No, <laughs> so, I mean, so it's the, really So people, the Pelosi and Democrats' concerns are that if we impeach him, it gives him... Uh, it gives him his base energy to, to potentially for him to win re-election next year. The bottom line is, are we about the right thing or not? And that's really what's got to guide our principles as we move forward because, and I see Mr. Terrell in the building, one of, one of our heroes so at uh, My New Philly. But, um, but you know, if uh, we, we have to stand up for what's right. And if we, if we're, we, look, we show weakness and we show that we don't have the, the guts to pursue the truth, then the the lies and the and the and the falsehoods are gonna are gonna rise to the surface, and that's what we have to avoid. So what you just said now is kind of like the political strategy, right? Like you you just told me like they're playing chess, okay? Yeah. So like and what some are, would say, let's keep it real. Some would say Pelosi's doing a good job because it's kind of stringing it along, it kind of keeps it in the news. I think as much as the impeachment, because at the end of the day, I don't think the goal is really you can impeach him, but the Senate's not going to convict him. So that wouldn't remove him from office. But what you want to do, and I think what she's trying to do, is that she's trying to string it out so that we can have more Mueller moments like we had yesterday. You know, so we can have more hearings. We can have people. We can have more good TV to really string out and really sort of drip in people's heads what is really going on here. So how about this? What are your personal views on it? Because you just told me the political. You didn't tell me, like, the personal. What I always say is you have to go, you have to be courageous. You have to do the right thing. The right thing is to begin impeachment proceedings. Now, we can talk about, you know, the political calculus. But, again, we can't, and I keep telling people this, is that we can't worry. We're basically worried about a relatively small group of white people, like, scaring them. Or, like, you know, those group of people in Wisconsin and and Pennsylvania and Michigan— they're going to vote for Trump again. They're going to vote for him regardless. So we can't worry about them. We have to worry about what's right for our country. And with the base of our party, which is women and people of color, which which want to get this sucker out here as soon as possible. And you know what? They're the, it's going to your point earlier. We get hold, held accountable for every darn little thing we do. We, we, are, we owe taxes. We, we don't pay a couple traffic tickets. We get held accountable. So why didn't this president get held accountable for multiple federal crimes? So you just... so. Right, I'm like interviewing you right now. Well, that, that's kind of part of the point of this. <laughs> so my other question is for you, Ray. Are you ready for this one? Eh? Um, so in regards to the Mueller report and, you know, so many people, you know, the president has this thing with media, like fake news, fake news. It's not real. It's not fake. It's fake. So, like, where can we get the whole report? Are there websites? Are there things yeah, to we'll do? Yeah, we'll tweet it out. I, want, I mean, it's on, it's on the federal it's the Department of Justice website. It's over 400 pages. But look, I mean, it, just just read the summaries. This is not hard. I mean, we're going to get into uh, sort of a version of this in a second. But, you know, I mean, if I tell you, if I tell you, don't talk to the feds, if I withhold evidence, if I lie to to, uh, investigators, if I fire the person that was investigating me, I mean, what, what, what am I doing? What am I doing? If I in terms of the conspiracy charge, if my campaign manager gives the Russians the data and says these are the states and these are the uh, voters that we're going for and this is the polling and this is their their databases. It's, if it's not a conspiracy, I don't know what that is. So that's my issue with Mueller and that's why I think he needs to go to Congress because I got questions because if I know if I was doing stuff like that, I, I would have been charged. So beyond the president, 
there's a lot of questions. I mean, his sons did shady stuff. His brother, son-in-law did some shady things. So there's still a lot of questions we need to answer. That's why Mueller's got to testify and speak to the general public. I know he's trying to stay out of it, but you know what? You're too into it, Pop. You know, you, you know, you got to, you know, you got to, we, we need answers here. <sighs> Sorry, I had to do that sigh. Because, you know, remember when the campaign started and everyone was going crazy over Hillary's emails? Sort of ironic, isn't it? No, like everybody. Like sort of ironic. Her emails, her emails, her emails. Sort of ironic. Her emails, yeah. her emails. She's a politician. How do you not know that you can't send professional emails on your personal phone? How can you? How do you not know that you can't have different routers in your house or all of these things? You're talking about a president that there's like actual proof from our federal government stating that he was bantering with the election and data, and people are going, like, how well, is that not let's real? Let's take a step back. Even if you don't want to convict the guy, you don't want to do the impeachment thing. The biggest thing Mueller said was, the Russians attacked us, and the United St- Americans, the administration, the, 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 the defense community, the law enforcement community, really the, our states in terms of protecting our voting data and our voting integrity, are really not prioritized this as a country. And it's simple. Why doesn't he prioritize it? He's not prioritizing it because that's how he wins. So, of course, he wants the game rigged because that's how he feels like he can win. So, again, even if you don't want to convict the guy, you think it's a waste of time, you think the Democrats are full of it, you think, well, it wasn't conclusive, the evidence. The proof's in the pudding. Why doesn't he do everything he can as a, as a country to aggressively not only uh, punish Russia for meddling in our election, but protect us from the next time? He's actually opening the door for more craziness to happen so yashira just to just to translate this from our people here to try to try to no i really go glad you your did this question. because i need I, I need the translation not not for like actually like for my soul to illustrate the shadiness <laughs> of this whole thing i'm We're gonna, gonna il- put myself for a moment in just trump's shoes so you will yashira Rivera, my right. co-host you're going to read some of the illegal behavior mueller identified in the report as if i did it as a private citizen and i will channel my abuela the concept Paz Lidia Collazo, her hypothetical reaction if I was accused of what Trump did. All right, so, okay, first alleged crime. Rafael Colazo frames police detective to get fired, right? So he framed a police detective to get fired. Um, so the detective's investigation into Ray would stop. OK, um, after that, then he tells his homies, his bros, um, I got detected fired to take the pressure off. This whole plot is caught on video, though, so. Rafaelito's in big trouble. He's going to get it. He's going to get it. <laughs> so she wouldn't say no obstruction, no collusion. That uh, would not be her reaction. She'd be she'd be seeing to see if she had enough she money really for said, my bail. No, that would really, be her would issue. Would she say that you're in trouble, or would she actually just deny it? No, she, I would actually be more in trouble with her. She'd be like, <laughs> you, "You're going to get it from me." That would be her issue. <laughs> so Rey so Colazo speaks to a witness in a criminal investigation. His homie Chino. That's my man, Chino boy. <laughs> Is that he real man though? <laughs> you know, yeah, actually, yeah. <laughs> Back in the days, you know. <laughs> When I may have done things like this. (laughs) So Chino to remind him, we cool, and not to talk to the police or tell them on on potential illegal acts that they did together. This comes out in the police report, right? That your boy Chino was like, eh. My reaction to my abuela would be, my grandson's going to jail. (laughs) Jail. My grandson (laughs) is going to jail. (laughs) The fact that you It would not be, no. Well, that's another story. (laughs) The reason I put that comment is, I don't know if you know this, I actually got... Accepted in the Yale University back in the days. Oh, hey. A lot of people don't know that. So, hey, whatever. So, so, so when she called her homegirl to tell her, she said, my grandson's going to jail. My grandson's going to jail. And her girlfriend was like, so what, you need bail money? Like, why are you showed <laughs> off about this? True story here on Race Talk Show. Let's get to the last one. So, so go back to the scene. We're going back. So let me just break it down for you real quick. And, uh, so, just to remind people, this is, we are interpreting. Oh, if a interpreting private citizen that. like myself, Ray Collazo, did the crimes that Mueller laid out in the in his report that Trump did. And just to do a rundown, since we had a tangent there about Yale, so he <laughs> by the detective that was doing the investigation. He told his boy about it, and he's doing doing his uh, grandmother's reactions. So, exactly. so not only does Ray do all one. this, so Ray public public uh, publicly imitated Im- intimidates his former lawyer, who has potential evidence of Colazo committing crimes like money laundering, racketeering, tax fraud. I mean, like the list continues. So what? So what do we think? The police have email evidence in the lawyer's testimony as well. It's alleged I pinch, pinch, 
my grandfather would say, ay Dios mío. It'd be a lot of praying, a lot of holy water. And, a lot of holy water? You mean like bathtubs of it? Yeah, and, you know, possibly, uh, you know, possibly some uh, chicken blood may be spilled. Um, <laughs> just to make sure that I'm okay. So, uh, so yeah, so uh, thank you for entertaining me, uh, for, for, uh, for allowing me to, uh, to go on that rant. So, you know, I want to get serious so, here for a second here, Yagi, because you have been on the air since this rash of anti-abortion laws have been passed by several conservative states. And Yaya, I know women's choice is important to you, and it's an important civil rights issue. Just wanted to make sure people, you know, just prepared. you know, you haven't um, you haven't been on the show since uh, you know, sort of this rash of anti-abortion laws and anti-choice laws, and really sort of in a few states, essentially eliminating access uh, for the most part to uh, abortion access uh, for women. So, just wanted to get your thoughts. I know you, it's an issue very cl- that you're very involved in, and I know you're, it's an issue you're very concerned about. So, Ray. I've actually haven't been turning on the news. So I've been getting a lot of emails, text messages. You know, I do co-facilitate a reproductive justice group, which has ha- has been a little bit stagnant because of myself and another leader. We're just like, we need a break. Um, but don't worry, we'll get revamped. So this is the issues. What's happening in this country, in Georgia, Alabama, Ohio, is pathetic. It's pathetic. So... Not only are they making access to abortion pretty much impossible, now they're criminalizing it, right? So not only can't you even get an abortion in some of these states, now if you were to get an abortion, you're facing life sentences. In Texas, they want to pass legislation that you even get the death penalty, okay? In, in Ohio, people, you know, and let me tell you something, in some of these states, it's if you you can't even have an abortion in instances of rape or incest they're making it, it, it they're making women literally glorified incubators and not giving men any sense of accountability you know it's i'm glad you brought up that point because you know and there's all these like with these heartbeat pills right so there's you know 6 weeks i mean it's literally virtually no time for a woman even to even know she's pregnant. she's pregnant, right? So a lot of hypotheticals, right? So, like, first of all, we're really going to imprison more women and more We're going to imprison women, women and we're going to imprison the doctors. Color, which I've talked about extensively on the show. This is silly in Georgia, some of these southern states. This is a, a political strategy to literally put more Democrats in prison, which is women of color, which is the base of the Democratic Party around the country, particularly in the South. And, you know, are we going to, are we going to, with a heartbeat bill, are we going to start at six weeks? Are we going to start... Uh, Getting men to pay child support? Well, not even child support. Are they going to be held accountable legally? Well, I mean, so just so that we're clear, this is Yaya Rivera talking. When I talk about reproductive justice and rights, I can only talk about it from the perspective of a patient, of a, of, of a woman who, if it wasn't for a Title X funded establishment, I wouldn't be sitting here today. Like, all BS aside, facts. Not only is abortion a, is a complex issue, it's also Title X funding. When people hear Title X funding, they think, you know, Planned Parenthood. But in reality, the smaller um, establishments that depend on that funding are the ones that are going to sh- shut down. So Title X funding is, is federal funded f- um, money that goes to these establishments who do preventative health care and health care in general. So screenings, cancer screenings, ultrasounds. Um, and and w- what this is neg- who this is negatively affecting are not women who have money. Okay, I am 33 years old, and only in my 30s did I go for the first time in my life to a non-Title X funded establishment Mm. because it's so expensive. You know, people always talk, well, oh, they could just do contraceptives, and, you know, that will alleviate abortion. Well, when people say that, I'm like, do you know how much an IUD is? Do you know how much birth control is? An IUD, if just based off of the ones that I know women my age get, is $1,400 up front just for the medication, not including the office fees, not including the procedure, not including the two doctor visits that you have to go in advance. So when I talk about these things, I'm talking as a patient, as a woman who had to depend on these services from the time I was 14, 15, till I was 30. And they're under attack. So the women now, predominantly women in poverty, predominantly women that are poor, don't have any access in advance. They don't have any money to go to the doctor in advance. There's no way for them to get the proper resources to even know what they're eligible and for. And because of this, of these restrictions, even though technically in most of these states it's not illegal because it's it's a federal law, they've restricted access to the point where there may only be one 
Title to fund a health clinic in your county, or Missouri, none. Or there's there's, there's they states just that are closed the last one. Like, in Missouri, they closed impossible. the last one, or and in Texas, so Texas. I mean, Texas is such a big state; it'd be hun- the next county will be three, four hundred miles away. And so it's it's really devastating for me to see what's happening because I feel at many times it becomes a topic of religion, of you know God is going to hate you for your sins. And my response is that to always, if that's the case, your God doesn't sound like a very, you know, forgiving human and or or entity. And the reason to why I say that is, and people are like, well, you can't doubt or be upset with politicians for what they believe in. Well, let me say this, and this may get me in some heat someday in the future, but I just need to get this off my chest, right? I don't care how you identify with religion. You can be Jewish, Muslim, Christian. If you're going to, if that's what you believe in, then do it between your off hours. Don't do it inside of your political buildings well, and this that is what can I negatively said on the affect show, people. This is what I showed last week is that choice works both ways. So if you have a, a look, and I, I've shared this on the show, me and my wife on a personal level, a pro, we live a pro-life lifestyle, but that's our choice. You know, there's certain countries, China back in the days, and you know, that, you know and, and, and the reality is that this is a gender issue because... And as I said on the show last week, men don't want anyone tell them what to do about anything. They want to smoke men all the weed they get- want. They want to have all the sex they want. They have kids or whatever woman they want. They want, to, you know. So they want to have whatever gun, whatever violent weapon they they want. So how are you going to tell me that this would be an issue if men could get pregnant? No, it wouldn't be an issue because if that's the case, the way they sterilize women, start sterilizing men and doing vasectomies, and then call me to see how that goes. That's right. Put men on the put men on birth control that has been FDA approved and that have gone to the government that have been cleared to work for men. Yes, that men won't take. Yeshira, for people out there that are getting frustrated and you know, look, <sighs> it is obviously a complicated issue and an emotional issue in our community and, and very sort of uh, hard to talk to about and you know in certain Except circles. Except with me, right? Um, but um, what? How can people get involved in? And having their voice heard in this debate, it's going to the Supreme Court's going to get involved. The court's going to be an ongoing court battle for the next several years. And it could if you don't live in a state that's already been impacted, that doesn't mean it can't be. And there are certain states trying to pass proactive legislation um, to increase access for health care for women. So what can people do to get involved? So before I answer that question, Ray, my last statement is this. And I want people to really listen to this. Women are going to find a method to do an abortion regardless of what the law is. It has been etched in stone for thousands of years that women do everything to have an abortion. Which is what happened before Roe v. Wade. Exactly. In some people's lifetimes. I mean, that was only 45 years ago. Yes. Back alley abortions. Okay. So what the government is doing is getting rid of safe, legal ways for women to get abortions. So I just want to make that fact clear. We're get, women are going to do, they're going to find a rhyme, reason, method, how, whatever it takes. There's literally pills that women are overdosing on online because they think it's going to help them and it doesn't. There's women that are going into other countries like Mexico to get those back alley abortions. They're not returning to their home. So this is not a joke. People are going to find a way regardless. So Ray, your question was what can, what can people do? So anytime people ask me how to get involved, I say this. Call your local family planning service facility. Call your local, and, and you don't know whether or not they're, 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 they're uh, Title X funded. Or, it, it doesn't have to be Planned Parenthood is what I'm saying. If, if you Google uh, family planning facility and you do it within your, um, you know, within your radius on your computer or smartphone, and if you don't have either of those, you know, go to your local library or go to your local um, doctor or clinician and they will have that information. Um, you know, and see it for yourself. I, I feel the most powerful way to spread a message or really convey something or understand is to see it with your own eyes. I know there's a lot of documentaries. There's, I mean, I talk about it professionally all the time about why it's so important. But if you're really unsure, volunteer for a day and escort women from their car to the establishment which doesn't necessarily mean they're going to the establishment for an abortion. They could be going there for a mammogram. They could be going there for their yearly pap smear. And listen to what people say to them. Listen to how they're being, how water is being thrown on them, how they're being sweared at, how they're being tugged at, how people walking them to their car are being attacked. That's a good example. Go Volunteer for uh, an in-service day when you talk to women who were raped by their fathers and had to carry their pregnancy in full term. 
sit there and talk to these women who and men who lost a child through a miscarriage and couldn't get the proper necessities or resources they needed because of the terminology of getting rid of the miscarriage, the same terminology medically of what an abortion is. Talk, sure. talk to that man, talk to that man and, and say, how did you feel seeing your wife in pain and potentially getting an infection that could kill her because you didn't have the insurance to get the proper procedure or take three appointments in advance to make sure this is what you want to do even though the child doesn't have a viable heart? That's right. That's right. And, and, you know, if you want, look, nobody wants there to ever be a need for an abortion. No. Right? So if you, if you want to work towards that goal, you want to support women access to health care, you want to protect women from, from sexual predators. You want to protect women from uh, men that, that, that are armed, that are dangerous. You know, so you want to, you know, so th- there's a lot of things you can do if you want to pre- prevent this, even the, the need or the potential need. You want to support women and it's ultimately support their choice and support their choice um, to do with their bodies what what they feel is best for them Thank at that moment. Thank you so much, Ray, for at saying that, that because this, and this, and this dialogue is even for men because, Absolutely. you know, God bless my, my hubby. That man sees how I feel when I relapse. He's the person that's there holding my hand through every infusion, transfusion. I mean, that kid psychologically I know goes through just as much as I do going through it. And I get so frustrated because it's like for people who say, how can I help? Just listen to these people's stories and see it firsthand. Absolutely. See it firsthand and see what the men have to go through. And Planned Parenthood and these, and these Title X funded facilities also help men. They help men get their exams. They help them with diabetes. They help them with smoking, addiction, abuse. These facilities offer everything. And they're specifically designed for people who can't afford to go to Penn, to go to, these, uh, to, go to Jefferson, who are now having programs trickled in because we can't, people, I'm saying we because my, the majority of my life, I could not afford to go to a doctor. And this is why we need to have these conversations. And there's a lot of women and a lot of people in our community. I mean, again, going back to the politics, Affordable Care Act, that put 20 more million people on the health care rolls. A good chunk of them, almost six million. They never Latino. had health insurance, and I'm one so, of those people. And there's still people that, without health insurance, are underinsured for for sure. So, um, and you're listening to Ray Coyaso and I Rivera here on Raise Latino Talk podcast That's and the right. Family Translation Radio Show here at WPPMLP 106.5 Philadelphia. As we wrap up this edition of the show, I want to reset the stage. We're really thankful to be able to have done our first live remote here of 2019. At the, at the opening night red carpet of the Philadelphia Latino Film Festival. Uh, we are, uh, they're about to show some of the first short films um, of the opening night, and there'll be a musical performance by Xenia Rubinos. Somebody was asking me about Xenia, and I said, well, I, she's a cross to me between um, Erica Badu and the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Very Dude, eclectic. Dude, why wasn't that the best description? Because it's Ray's Latino Talk Pocket. <laughs> I mean, we, we describe things here. We're very descriptive. Here on the show, and uh, that's why it's you find these things in translation. Get it? Get it? That's the new name of the show. So, um, and uh, we've talked to a lot of community leaders. Of course, the uh, the director of the film festival, Marangeli Mejia, has been uh, joined us. Graced our, um, our our chair here, of course. Lisa, do you have a second to say to uh, Lisa Montanez in the background is one of the leaders of this event as well. And a lot of good people here. Yvette Nunez joined us. Fernando Torres, a lot of good people. Yashira, remind people where they can find the film festival. They still have time to be part of this. Uh, they'll, they'll be programming for the next three days and um, how they can access tickets. Yes, absolutely. So I, I really, for those of you who are listening to C.I. Rivera, I really encourage you to check out phlaff.org. I went on there last night and I was on there for like four hours and I watched every like preview, as I said earlier. You can buy, you can get your tickets. You can see what films they're showing, what programs they have. So definitely check it out. We have to support local artists. We have to support local organizations who are shining the light on local artists. If it wasn't for the, the Latino Film Festivals of Philadelphia, if it wasn't for Philly Cams of the world, right? And I wouldn't be here. So it's important to continue support your local, local artists and people no. in this industry. And I think it's a great lesson because you can take your vision, you can take your vision to reality. This event didn't exist eight years ago. And the founders and uh, now under the leadership, Manangeli, have made it a must go to really the kickoff for the Latino cultural uh, community here in Philadelphia and for artists of all, I mean, it's such a diverse crowd, a lot of great people here, English, Spanish, Latin American, Latino, millennial, 
Uh, all ages are represented here, and we're really proud to be part of this. Again, if you want tickets or want to have more information, go to their website, phlaff.org. That's phlaff.org. The event's going to take place at the University of the Arts all weekend, located at 211 South Broad Street, right in the heart of Center City, Philadelphia. So it's a must-go-to event. You share as we wrap up this show. Just give people a sense. I know they're hating because they should have been here, um, but they, have, again, have time to enjoy this. So just your, uh, your thoughts about this live remote and uh, this experience being with the hint they hear in, our, in the city of Bradley Love. So I just want to say again, thank you to Philly Cam for setting us up here today. Thank you, Ray, for the invitation and for always. Dude, like, Ray, Ray you have turned my last three months into the most wild adventure. Like you from know. the Constitution Center to the Latino. I, 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 I know. I told. I, it's been crazy. I know you got that Biden invite. You couldn't show up, but that, we got all kind of. But that's our deal. Nelly today is represented for the group. You, oh my God, there was a lot of haters. There was Christina couldn't make it. You couldn't make it. I couldn't make it. And then I had reached out to Rebecca Steph as a homegirl. Yeah. And she didn't check her DM for like a week, and then she was like, "Damn, I missed it." And she like, I was like, "That you I know, late, girl. I know, like, you um, late." But that's all right. We're gonna keep collaborating with feel, her. Making me feel bad because I did have to turn down Joe Biden. Uh, it's all right. There'll Uncle be other. There'll, there'll be, be other. other there'll be other events, and it was good. And there'll be other. I've actually been in touch with all the major candidates because of my day job. I'm going to be uh, the point person for our candidate uh, forum that we're going to have at our conference in San Diego in August. So actually, I, it turns out that uh, Pete Buttigieg's director of constituent services is a Dominican Yumbo, one of my Yumbo, Jose Morales. Really? So we've been in touch. He had to move to Chicago for the campaign. So uh, so when I go to Shia, I think I'm going to connect with the. Mayor Pete's crew, which will be yeah, exciting. Yeah, so, so, you know, thank you again, Ray. And like I said, like you had mentioned, it is vibrant. It is beautiful in here. It is colorful. It is diverse. It is powerful. It is strong. Absolutely. It is motivating. We're gonna, we're gonna get Lat- Latinx, Latino, Latina. We gotta, you got to give us a minute, Lisa, as we wrap this up. A minute, a minute, a minute. Like, just give me a minute. So we're so trying we, to we gotta get Lisa here. My as first as co-host. As Make sure she's on the camera. We got to get Lisa Montanez. I, I, I'm still getting used to calling you Lisa Montanez. Does my, does my Moni- hair look good? Uh, always <laughs> wonderful, my friend. So uh, Lisa Montanez, not only um, uh, the communications director for the film festival, but my first co-host to raise Latino Hola, mi gente. Lisa, Bad. it's been too long. This is so exciting. Lisa, give people a flavor of the people that aren't here. They need to be here. They need to get here tomorrow. And they sure. do need to be here. Right now, there's a spoken word artist, Julia Lopez, who's actually performing right now. We just showed a short, um, Room 140, um, which is about, um, just essentially about um, how the emotions and the things that immigrants go through as soon as they're um, coming into the country. Um, it's just a lot. I mean, we're showing exclusive sneak peeks of things that they're going to experience um, from here until Sunday. Lace, I know you're, you're really one of the leaders, not only of this festival, but really making this a multimedia experience, the artwork, the entertainment, the visuals, the social media content that you're putting together on this. So just share with people a little bit about how you've put this together. Well, it's not just me. <laughs> I can't say that. I'm always saying that there's a team behind everything, right? The team behind the artwork. Yeah, sure, um, isn't it refreshing to hear everyone that comes everyone up here? Everyone that comes they support up to the each table. other, they promote oh. each other. This is a real team. But that's what Latinos do. <laughs> that's right. Right? Like, you know, if we don't work in silos, like, that's just not how you create magic, right? So, I have, I'm kind of like splitting my time between Visit Philadelphia and the Philadelphia Latino Film Festival. And I worked together with the creative team, myself, Marangeli, and Didier. Didier was a major part of the artwork that you see in collaboration with Carlos Rosa, who's an incredible artist that works. Um, I worked with him when I was at Mural Arts, and he works a lot with um, formerly incarcerated um, men who are coming and want to integrate themselves back into the community. Um, so he's definitely an artist that we wanted to collaborate. He gave our vibe for the entire festival. Lisa, um, before, I know you have to run, and we really appreciate your time. I'm so proud of you. I remember when she was just like uh, a, the first <laughs> intern on the podcast, and, and I'm so, uh, you've become such an incredible professional. I got to come and, back. We got to oh, do like a oh, throwback, oh, no, we're gonna, throwback we're, episode. I, I just always feel bad. You know, like people that you know real good, <laughs> and they know they're busy, I always feel bad. So I'm going to start feeling bad with Cher, but I'd love to bring you guys back. But Lisa, uh, quickly, visit Philly. Let people know there's people listening to this all over the country. Let people know why this is one of the hottest cities to bring your convention, to visit, and especially from a Latino perspective, the flavor, the food, the arts. The, I mean, it's just insane the things that are going on here in Philadelphia, and you're a big part of that. I mean, Philadelphia is a city of neighborhoods. It's a city of diversity. Um, 
there's just so much of a mix of culture and food and we're one of the top people in the industry Yo, for you food, gotta follow okay? lace on ig because <laughs> she'll she'll find like a, a like a new noodle shop in fishtown or something Mira. like damn like i'll be trying to go to the Ceviche gym all the time and and I'm like <laughs> damn she finds all these places but it's good because now i know where they are so lisa you are the best you know your family and um and you're going to be back on the show really soon and congratulations Absolutely. the philadelphia latino film festival another one of your great uh, milestone events so we support you in any every way okay absolutely you guys have fun All thank right. you Lisa's Whoop. gonna get back to work and uh, I want to thank as we wrap up the show the executive producer of, of our radio show Vanessa Ramir Graver Vanessa yeah. was really having to bite her tongue because I'm so bad with the technical things and the way I handled the wires and I didn't know the, the terminology but she was very patient with me and uh, so I want to thank you Vanessa for helping put this together with our signage and our equipment and of course our associate producer our intrepid Associate producer Samantha Gonzalez. That's right, Samantha. Who braved the weather right at five o'clock? The heavens opened, and uh, and it was quite a storm and rush hour traffic to get here. So thank you, Samantha. So I know, Shira, you 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 may have trekked through the through the storm a few blocks yourself. Uh, no, I sprinted, so I didn't touch it. You share your final thoughts here uh, <laughs> as we wrap up this edition of the show. So I just want to say thank you for those of you who are tuning in. Thank you to Vanessa. Thank you to Philly Camp. Thank you to Samantha. Thank you, Ray. And thank you um, to, you know, thank you to art as a as a former art student and think and and you know a lover of film. I truly am honored and humbled to be here. And you all should come. Make sure you check out phlaff dot dot org. And you know, I'm just going to end today with gratitude and all nothing but Latinx love. This has been a wonderful episode. Again, thank you, our Philly Camp family. Thank you for our podcast listeners, the people checking out the show on social media handles. Thank you again for the Philadelphia Latino Film Festival family for having us and joining Found in Translation Radio Show and Raised Latino Talk Podcast. Peace. Uh